Uh, greetings, everybody. Listen, um, when I do the closeout on this video, I actually forgot the last uh, few verses in Revelation chapter 3. So even though I close it out, there's still another minute or two left, if you're interested. All right, uh, so wait until the end end till it uh, actually stops. So, all righty, take care. Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This is going to be the part four and the conclusion of stars. So turn your King James Bible to Revelation chapter 1. I'm going to, this verse, this chapter by itself proves that sometimes stars are indeed angels. The very word revelation comes from the, the root word where it, where it means to reveal. You know, people say, oh, well, Revelation's a hidden book. Well, Daniel's a hidden book until the end time. But Revelation is means to reveal. And if you've never read the entire Bible from the Old Testament to the New Testament, you know, Genesis 1-1 to Revelation 22, um, quite a bit of the symbolism from Revelation comes from the Old Testament. I mean, a, 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 virtually all of it, in my opinion. So if you've never read the Old Testament and you you look at the symbolism of the New uh, Revelation, you'd never catch the similarities and make the connections necessary to, for more understanding. All right, so Revelation 1.1. 1, 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show, to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And when people read that shortly come to pass, they automatically assume, oh, well, this is, you know, this the 70 AD, you know, the, this is this is all past. That's what they'll tell you, because you know, uh, two thousand years is not shortly coming to pass. You know, that's what they'll tell you. But um, is this perspective from human eyes or from God's eyes? In 2 Peter 3 and verse 8, we read the following. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing. What does it mean to be ignorant? It means you lack knowledge in something. When it comes to physics, calculation, rocket science, brain surgery, I'm ignorant. No problem. When it comes to the Bible, not so much. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord, one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. So shortly coming to pass in the Lord's eyes is like a couple days. Is a couple days a long ways away? <laughs> I don't think so. See, that's how you get tricked up and get into preterism, which preterists will tell you that all Bible is past. And right now we're living in, this is Christ's kingdom. This evil, wicked world is Christ's kingdom, and he's ruling and reigning from our heart. Well, except for one thing. The Bible says that every eye shall see him when he returns. And I didn't see him. So, you know, they, they got they got to explain away everything. Yeah, the mark of the beast is past. Everything in the book of Revelation is past. That's what they'll tell you. But I, I don't see it. 
All right, so Revelation 1. The Revelation, well, Revelation chapter 1, verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant, John. Now, something you should know. Do you know out of the 12 apostles, 10 died for their faith? John's the only apostle that died of old age. Of course, Judas hung himself. And uh, Paul also ended up dying for his faith. Okay, so. Uh, and he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John, who bare record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw. Yeah, tell that to pre-tribbers. Uh, all the apostles and many prophets died for their faith. But God forbid, oh, God's not a wife, Peter. He wouldn't let us die for the faith. We're the bride of Christ. The pre-trib rapture. Uh, you know what? People like that should read the Fox's, F-O-X-E, Fox's Book of Martyrs. About all the probably millions, well, not in the book, but examples of, uh, pro, you know, got to be millions of people that died for their faith. M millions. But not the, but not the pre-trib rapture crowd. They're the extra special Christians in the eyes of the Lord. The Lord would never let them suffer and die for their faith. Why, why, the, God's not a wife beater. No, God's not a wife beater, but Satan is. So, verse 2, Who bear record of the word of God, and of the testimony of Jesus Christ, and of all things that he saw. Verse 3, Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep, and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. Do you know you're blessed to read and hear the words of the prophecy of this book? Oh, yeah? John, to the seven churches which are in Asia. Now, we're talking about what's called Asia Minor, which is the Middle East, Greece, you know, that area. Matter of fact, uh, the seven churches that John talks about are in what is now present-day Turkey because it used to be called Greece but then those peace-loving Muslims went in and uh, killed all the Greeks yeah yeah those you know the religion of peace that lives by the sword yeah yeah they must have been displeasing in the eyes of the Lord for them to have suffered such a fate but we'll read it. We'll read about it. John, to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you and peace from him which is and which was and which is to come. So Christ is, Christ was, and Christ will come. And from the seven spirits, seven spirits which are before his throne. You know, isn't it funny that they call alcohol spirits, alcoholic spirits? That's what they actually call them that. Do you know what the Muslims call um, devils, demons? They call them jinn. Of course, they spell it J-I-N-N. But it's pronounced the same way, like uh, you ever heard of um, Tanqueray Jinn? You know, London, you know, gin was a uh, popular drink in England, G-I-N. I wonder if it, there's a connection with that name. I, you know, I, I don't know. All right. And, uh, and from the seven spirits, which are before his throne. And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness not a Jehovah's Witness, 
and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us, boy, that's a strong testimony, unto him that loved us, and washed us from our sins in his own blood. Wow. I you you could that's a, that verse could preach, huh? And hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. All right, remember I was telling you about preterists saying that everything is past. Well, guess what? Verse 7 puts a nail in that coffin. Behold, he, who's he? Christ. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him. And, you know, they got to do some mental gymnastics to think that Christ came with the clouds and every eye saw him. Did you see him? Uh, no. Well, me neither. I didn't see Christ coming in the clouds. And neither did they. This one verse kills preterism. Saying Christ returned in 70 AD or whatever. Uh, no. No, no, no. You know, I, when I hear people, they look at this stuff and they don't believe it. I got to wonder, are they under strong delusion? Has God or Satan deceived them? Or are they deceivers? I don't know. You know, you got to wonder. Let's go to Acts chapter 1. I, I want to do, I don't want any of you to get sucked up into this preterism garbage. I mean, they make some good arguments. And you know, a lot of Matthew 24 was fulfilled in 70 AD, but it wasn't completely fulfilled. And there's, you know, sometimes a prophecy has a dual fulfillment. Sometimes it has a partial fulfillment and then an ultimate, total, complete fulfillment. So let's go to Acts chapter 1, verse 1. The former treatise have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach until the day in which he was taken up, taken up. After that, he, through the Holy Ghost, had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen. See, Christ made that choice. To whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days. And speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. And what was the promise? The Holy Spirit, right? Verse 5. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. And that was fulfilled in at Pentecost. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, All right, so they're asking the Lord a question. Lord, will thou wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? Um you know, they they knew that one day the Lord would restore Israel. Okay, the Lord is going to do it, not the United Nations in 1948 with the Antichrist over in the Middle East. That's not Israel. That's not a fulfillment of this particular Bible prophecy. I do think it is a fulfillment of Bible prophecy. The wheat and the tares. God is gathering the tares and the bundles to be burned. But... Um, yeah. 
Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he, Jesus, said unto them, It is not for you to know the time or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. See, the United Nations is not Christ. Christ didn't return and bring Israel back to the land and restore them to a kingdom. Hasn't happened yet, Mr. Preterist. Verse 8, Jesus speaking, But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Verse 9, And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up. Who was taken up? Christ. He was taken up. He was taken up, and a cloud, and a cloud received him out of their sight. He was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men, angels, two men stood by them in white apparel, which said, which also said, now listen to this, these two men, angels, are going to ask a question, you know, they're going to make a statement here. Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? You know, what are you doing standing around here looking up in the sky? Come on, dudes. Get with the program. Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? Listen carefully. This same Jesus, which is taken up, taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. Huh. So he went up into the clouds. He's going to come back in the clouds. And every eye is going to see him. Did you see him? Me neither. Preterists don't. They're deceived. They're deceived. All right, let's go back to Revelation 1.7. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him. And they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him, even so, amen. Hmm. Uh, and Jesus speaking, verse 8, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is, and which was, and which is to come, the Almighty. I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation, which is trouble, and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was in the isle that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. According to legend, they tried to kill John, but they couldn't do it. So they exiled him to the isle of Patmos to shut him up. I don't know how true that is, but hey, it makes a good story, right? Verse 10. I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day, and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet, saying, Jesus speaking, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, and what thou seest, write in a book, write in a book, and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, and unto Smyrna, and unto Pergamos, and unto Thyatira, and unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. Some of the, if my memory serves me correctly, don't hold me to this, but some of these churches are in Tur modern day Turkey that used to be called Greece. Of course, Ephesus is still, I think Ephesus is still around. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, it's been a long time since I've looked this stuff up. Verse 12. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me, and I am being turned. I saw seven golden candlesticks. 
seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. So, he's looking at Christ. Verse 14. Boy, the black Hebrews hate this verse. His head and his hair, they'd be like, woo. Yeah, it'd be like, woo. Hey, Wooey. Yeah. Yeah. No. It says his head and his hairs were white like wool. doesn't say his hair was woolly. It says his hair, his head, his head and his hairs were white like wool. We call that blonde. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. You know, for years I thought, flame of fire. So his eyes were red. He was like an albino. But somebody pointed something out to me. And makes perfect sense. You ever gone, uh, ever seen a, a, a butane, or no, a, a gas stove? And you turn it on and what color is the flame? Blue. Yeah. A blue flame. Did he have blonde hair and blue eyes? Very possible. Verse 15. And his feet like undefined brass, as if they burned in a furnace. Well, guess what? Somebody um, was a metallurgist and had read this. And they took a piece of brass. They put it in a furnace. And guess what color brass burns in a furnace? White with a uh, kind of a golden brownish tint to it. I'd seen the video. Yeah. I saw the video. Well, brass is brownish. It's not certainly not black. And his feet like undefined brass, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. And he had in his right hand seven stars. Ah, that's why I was reading this chapter. And in his right hand, seven stars stars seven stars keep that in mind and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength and when i saw him i fell at his feet as dead and he laid his right hand upon me saying unto me fear not i am the first and the last i am he that liveth and was dead and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. Christ holds the keys of hell and of death. Write the things which thou hast seen, and the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter. Now what about these seven stars in his hand? Well, Verse 20 here is going to tell us what it is. The mystery, the mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand and the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. And the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches. See, the churches are to be the candlesticks, the light to those that are around them. Supposed to be. But if that candle goes out, all it is is darkness, right? So the mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand and the seven golden candlesticks, the seven stars are are the angels of the seven churches. See, I told you, angels, right here. Stars are angels sometimes. Sometimes. All right. Um, 
Let's see. Wow. I guess we'll read all of chapter 2, Revelation chapter 2. Turn the page. Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. Now, the seven golden candlesticks are the seven churches, right? Ephesus is one of them. Verse 2, I know thy works, and thy labor, and thy patience, and how thou canst not bear them which are evil. And thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not, and hast found them liars. And there's a lot of people here that'll say, oh, see, this is proof. Paul's a false apostle. Uh, Paul wrote an, a, a letter, an epistle to the Ephesians. I don't see anywhere in here where Jesus says the word Paul. I don't see that. And you know what? People that add Paul's name to this, uh, there's a verse in Revelation in the book that says those that add to this book will be have the curses of God added to them. And those that remove from the book will have their names removed, blotted out from the book of life. So that's something to think about, you know? Really. I don't see Paul's name here anyway. And you know, people that deny Paul, um, in 2 Peter, Peter uh, acknowledges Paul as a brother in the faith. And he even acknowledges that some things Paul writes are hard to understand. But, uh, you know, people that deny Paul are actually trying to convince, con, con you, convince you that the Holy Spirit failed to warn the 11 apostles, all 11 of them, failed to warn them that Paul was an imposter sent to the devil to infiltrate and destroy from within. Yeah, yeah, like the Holy Spirit failed to warn them that Paul was a fake. But they'll try to convince you, oh, Paul's a fake. Oh, he doesn't belong in the Bible. And you know why? Because Paul blasts the Antichrist, you know, the six-pointed star crowd, yeah, and uh, he blasts them and gives you a lot of warnings about the end times and the man of sin, the son of perdition. Yeah, a lot, a lot, which is why they want to get rid of him. You really think you know, so they got to throw out all of Paul's writings. They got to throw out Second Peter, and they got to throw away the Book of Acts too, because the Book of Acts tells of Paul's conversion. What are you left with? Almost nothing. You got the four Gospels: uh, James, Jude, First Peter, uh, and Revelation. To them, that's that's the New Testament. They're deceivers. Don't listen to them. They're devils. Or they were deceived by the devils. I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience and how thou canst not bear them which are evil and thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not and has found them liars and has borne and has patience for my name's sake hast labored and has not fainted. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee because thou hast left thy first love. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent. Hmm. God is telling a believing church here to repent. That's another heresy running around. People will tell you, oh, you don't have to repent. Uh, that's a work. And we're not saved by works. We're saved by grace. All you got to do is believe. That's all you got to do is believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. 
don't worry about repenting. Uh, really? You know, James chapter 2 says, even the devils believe and tremble. Are they saved? Uh, no. 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 You know, we have to turn from our wickedness. And then they'll try to convince you that uh, a sinless God repenting, which means he's changed his mind, you know, it's like when he told Jonah to go to uh, Nineveh and told the people to repent, that God repented of his destroying Nineveh because the people listened to Jonah and they turned from their wickedness. So God decided, okay, I'm not going to destroy Nineveh because the people repented. And they're going to try to convince you that repentance for the Lord and repentance for man means the same thing. Uh, stay away from those people. They're devils, they're deceivers, or they're deceived, and they don't know what they're talking about. We are sinful creatures. We need to repent. Jesus taught repentance. John the Baptist taught repentance. You know... <sighs> God is a sinless, holy, righteous being that doesn't need repentance to turn from sin. And if you think repenting of your sin is a work and you're earning your salvation, you need to quit listening to preachers and get into the Bible, the King James. Seriously. You know, turn them all off. Spend time in the Bible, either listening or reading. Verse 5, Revelation 2. Jesus speaking, Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen and repent. Christ is telling a believing church to repent and do the first works. Do your first love. Do the things you did when you first got saved. And do the first works or else I will come unto thee quickly and will remove thy candlestick out of his place except thou repent. And what is the candlestick? It's the church, people! And if it gets removed, well, that, that's what happened to a, some of the churches in, that, were, that are in modern-day Turkey. They got removed. Verse 6. But this thou hast. Oh, yeah, you, you got a good point here. That thou hatest the needs, the deeds, the works, the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. And I'm not exactly sure what the Nicolaitans uh, believed. You can look it up. There are some differences of opinion, and I just, I don't know. Verse 7. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. And to the angel of the church in Smyrna write, These things saith the first and last, which was dead and is alive. Oh boy, this, this verse will uh, get you kicked out of a lot of uh, social media. I know thy works in tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich, well, poverty in the physical realm, but rich in the spiritual realm. And I know the blasphemy of those which say they are Jays and are not, but are the sin of Gog, of Satan. Yeah, uh, uh, keywords, people, keywords. That's what gets your videos kicked off. I got to be cautious. So, if you don't, I'm doing keywords. So, if you want to read Revelation 2 and then uh, the verse, which is number 9, uh, yeah. And by the way, this is getting to be called hate. Yeah. Really, it is. Verse 10. Fear none. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. 
But the pre-trib rapture crowd, they don't believe that. Uh-uh. No. Uh-uh. No, we're the we're we're better than all those rest of those people. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. You know, there's two deaths. There's a physical death. There's a spiritual death. Remember when Jesus told Nicodemus it came to him by night? You must be born again. There's a physical birth, and then there's a spiritual birth. Well, there's two deaths for those that are, well, to the saved, there's two births. And only one death. But to the unsaved, there's one birth and two deaths. Think about it. Think about that. He that overcometh shall not be heard of the second death. And to the angel of the church in Pergamos write, These things saith he, which hath the sharp sword with two edges. You know, uh, two-edged sword, it cuts both ways. It cuts coming and it go, cuts going. Pergamos, remember that. Verse 13, I know thy works and where thou dwellest even where Satan's seat is. Satan's seat is. Satan's throne, Pergamos. If I remember correctly, that's in Turkey, modern-day Turkey. Can you imagine that? Uh, you ever heard of the Ottoman Empire? It lasted for, I think, like 500 years. It didn't collapse until World War I, well, after World War I. Yeah, Muslim. The Ottoman Empire. It was per quite large. Satan's seat. His throne? Is that his throne room? Hmm. Makes you wonder. I know thy works and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seat is. And thou holdest fast my name and hast not denied my faith. Even in those days, wherein Antipas was my faithful martyr who was slain among you where Satan dwelleth. Boy, talk about a rough neighborhood. Satan's seat. Boy, that's rough. Whew. All right, so the Lord has some good things to say about this church. But in verse 14, but, but, you know, goats, goats like the but things, right? But, I have a few things against thee, because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat things sacrificed unto idols, and to commit fornication. Uh, spiritual fornication, or physical fornication, or both. What do you mean, eat things sacrificed unto idols? Uh, are you eating food that's been dedicated to the devil? And I mean, knowingly? Think about that next time you see a kosher thing on your uh, on the food. Yeah, makes you wonder, don't it? So hast thou also them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which things I hate. Repent. Yeah, there's Jesus telling the church to repent again. A believing church telling them to repent. Repent or else I will come unto thee quickly and I will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna and will give him a white stone and in the stone a new name written, which no man knoweth, saving he that receiveth it. Very interesting. And unto the angel of the church in Thyatira write, These things saith the Son of God, who hath his eyes like unto a flame of fire, 
and his feet are like fine brass. I know thy works and charity and service and faith and thy patience and thy works and the last to be more than the first. Notwithstanding, I got a few things against you. Oh, yeah. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee because thou sufferest or allow because thou allow thou sufferest that woman Jezebel which calleth herself a prophetess you, uh, uh, wait a minute. Jezebel where have I read that before oh yeah that was the wife of uh, King Ahab uh, God was not pleased with King Ahab uh, the Bible says that Ahab did more to provoke the Lord to anger than all the kings that were before him. And guess who he married? Jezebel. King Ahab was bad, but Jezebel was worse. It's sort of like Bill and Hillary, if you ask me. I don't know. Hell, yeah. never mind. Because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my spirits, I mean, I'm sorry, to teach and to seduce my servants, to commit fornication, and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. Uh, commit fornication. Physical, spiritual, or both. And I gave her, Jezebel, space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. See, the Lord is a Lord of chances. He gives you space to repent. Verse 22, but she didn't. Nope, she wouldn't. Verse 22, behold, I will cast her into a bed and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. And I will kill her children with death. Physical children or spiritual children? I don't know. Maybe both. And all the churches shall know that I am he which searcheth the reins and hearts. And I will give unto every one of you according to your works. See, I believe that uh, the I believe the Bible teaches that once you're saved, you do good works, and your good works will uh, determine your position in the kingdom. Like those of you that are in the service, you have privates, you have sergeants, you have officers, lieutenants, captains, colonels, generals. Uh, that's my opinion. You know, some people are going to be ruling a lot and some people are going to be street sweepers, I guess. I don't know. All right, verse uh, 24. But unto you I say, and unto the rest in Thyatira, that many as have not this doctrine and which have not known the depths of Satan... Why the depths? Because it leads straight down to hell, right? And which have not known the depths of Satan, as they speak, I will put upon you none other burden, but that which ye have already hold fast till I come. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. And he will rule them with a rod of iron. As the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father. And I will give him the morning star. The morning star. In Revelation 22, guess who the morning star is? Jesus! And he will give, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and the, 
as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I have received of my father, and I will give him the morning star. There, you're going to be given the, more, the, the, the spirit of Christ. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the spirit saith unto the churches. All right, I guess we ought to read uh, chapter three. What do you say? Boy, I tell you what. Um, Lord has a lot of admonitions about the um, the churches, doesn't he? Oh yeah. Chapter three, verse one, and unto the angel of the church in Sardis, write. These things saith he that hath the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know thy works, that thou hast a name, that thou livest and art dead. So I guess they're spiritually dead, but they're physically alive, right? Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. For I have not found thy works perfect before God. Remember therefore how thou hast received and heard and hold fast and repent. Well, there's Jesus saying repent again to a believing church. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. Thou hast a few names even in Sardis which have not defiled their garments. I guess that's the flesh. And they will and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. He that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment. And I will not, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life. All those people that say eternal security, once saved, always saved, you know, well, once you believe in Jesus, you it's impossible for you to go to hell. Uh, but that's not what Jesus says. Jesus says that you have to overcome, that you'll be clothed in white raiment, which is clothing, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life. But I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. If your name can be blotted out of the book of life, eternal security, once saved, always saved, is a false doctrine. And it looks like it is. You know, grace is not a license to sin. Verse 6. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write. Phileo means, uh, is a Greek word meaning love. These things saith he that is holy. He that is true. He that hath the key of David. The key of David. Hmm. I did a Bible study on the key of David. One thing about David, he had strong faith, and when he was wrong, he would admit he was wrong and repent. So I wonder if that's along the lines of the key of David. He that hath the key of David, he that openeth and no man shutteth, and shutteth and no man openeth, I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it, for thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. All right, here's these key words again. Behold, I will make them of the sin of Gog, of Satan, which say they are Jays, and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet. <coughs> Excuse me. 
Behold, I will make them to come and to worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. Tell that to the Zyombies. Yeah. Verse 10. All right, verse 10. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I will also keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast. Let that no man take thy crown. Hmm. Well, if we're going to be kings and priests of the Lord, you, you want to keep your crown, right? Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out. And I will write upon him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, not the old Jerusalem, not the one that's, you know, not the one that has a gay pride parade. No, 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 no. Which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down from out of heaven from my God. Uh, hey, Preterus, when did the New Jerusalem come down out of heaven? Uh, oh, that's, that's spiritual. Yeah, the New Jerusalem reigns and rules in our hearts. Yeah, yeah, I, I don't think so. Which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God, and I will write upon him my new name. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. And unto the church, and unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write. You know what? The um, they had some councils back in the day, and they decided what books belonged in the Bible and what books did not. Gospel of Thomas, no, didn't make it. But you know, the book of Revelation, the Laodicean representative said, voted no for the book of Revelation. Gee, I wonder why. Huh. So let's keep reading. Yeah, they did. The book of Laodicea, they didn't like what was in the book of Revelation. So they said, uh, uh, we don't want this book in the Bible. So, yeah. And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, these, thing, these things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot, I would thou wert cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. I, I'm going to spit you out. You know, people, let me tell you something. What good is lukewarm coffee? I mean, it, you know, if it's hot, drink iced coffee or iced tea. Or if it's winter and it's cold, well, drink iced hot tea or hot coffee but lukewarm what good is it what good is lukewarm coffee and that's what they were i will spew thee out of my mouth i'm going to spit you out verse 17 because thou sayest i am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing that sounds like the TBN crowd, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. God wants you to be rich. Uh, positive confession. You know, God wants you to be healthy and wealthy and wise. And, uh, yeah. And, and, yeah. Let's go to uh, 1 Timothy chapter 6. Uh, Timothy is called a pastoral uh, epistle or letter, you know, for pastors. Pa uh, Timothy was a young pastor, and 
you know here's paul you know this is the thing they they they're gonna they want people want to convince you that this does not belong in the bible so let's read first timothy 6 i think this applies to the church of laodicea i really do let as many servants as are under the yoke count their own masters worthy of all honor that the name of god and his doctrine be not blasphemed see if you're a somebody's servant it's because god allows it and they that have believing masters let them not despise them because they are brethren but rather do them service because they are faithful and beloved partakers of the benefit these things teach and exhort and you know what in the kingdom the servants might end up being the the over and above those who were their masters on earth you never know verse 3 if any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words even the words of our lord jesus christ and to the doctrine which is according to godliness he is proud knowing nothing but dotting about questions and strifes of words you ever meet people like that all they can do is uh fight over words and questions and you know whereof cometh envy strife railings and evil surmisings perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth listen to this carefully supposing that gain is godliness from such withdraw thyself yeah you know there's people that'll tell you that having great wealth is proof that you are a you know godly person oh god bless that person if that was true the rockefellers would be the most godly wonderful people in the world according to their thing well one of one of are they uh among the most blessed godly people in the world well uh that's going to be up to the lord jesus christ to decide not me but for the tbn crowd oh yeah supposing that gain is godliness from such withdrawal thyself turn away paul says but godliness with contentment is great gain you know if you're a godly person be content with what you have the lord gave you what he gave you verse 7 for we brought nothing into this world and it is certain we can carry nothing out yep naked from my brother uh, mother's womb and i've never seen i used to do i was a volunteer chaplain at the south florida va cemetery and did eulogies at many a funeral there sometimes people got mad because i was too preachy well gee i'm sorry you hire a christian clergy and, and you get mad when he quotes the bible well you should have bought a yeah, never mind but i've never seen a casket with a trailer on the back never didn't see any hearses with trailers on the back to carry the stuff you know never for we brought nothing into this world and it is certain we can carry nothing out and having food and raiment clothing let us be therewith content but they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare a trap people and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts you know i'll tell you what um guys that got a lot of money i've seen so many beautiful women just throw themselves at this you know like elvis you know i couldn't imagine having all these gorgeous women throwing themselves 
at me when I was 20 years old. I never had that problem. Never had that problem. Never, never, never. Uh, but uh, it could definitely lead you astray. Oh, yeah. But they that will be rich fall into temp a temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. Perdition means to fall. For the love of money, the love of money is the root of all evil. You know, I, I had somebody once tell me, uh, good people love people and use things, and bad people love things and use people. Think about that. And most of the rich people I've ever met, they love money. I got a family member, loves money. Loves money more than any of the family. I'll tell you that, which is a shame, but it's the way it is. You know, they would, uh, they could have $100,000 in the bank. You think they would uh, give you a couple hundred dollars to go to the dentist when your tooth is bad? No. No, because they don't want 100000 They want 200000 Or if they have two, they want five. And if they have five, they want a million. And if they had 10 million, they would want 20. It just, it never ends. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which some, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. But thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. Oh, this can't be true. This is Paul speaking. Oh, Paul's a false apostle. Yeah, right. You know, people that say that stuff are eat up, ate up with the devil, really. Verse 12. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou also art called and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. I give thee charge in the sight of God, who quickeneth all things, and before Christ Jesus, who before Pontius Pilate witnessed a good confession. Oh, yeah. yeah maybe we should keep reading. That thou keep this commandment without spot, unrebukable unto the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. Well, I haven't seen Christ appeared yet, so. Which is, uh, which in his times he shall show who is the blessed and only potentate, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who only hath immortality dwelling in the light, which no man can approach unto, whom no man hath seen nor can see, to whom be honor and power everlasting. Amen. Charge them that are rich in this world, that they be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God, which giveth us richly all things to enjoy, that they do good, that they be rich in good works, ready to distribute, willing to communicate. Laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come, that they may lay hold on eternal life. O Timothy, keep that which is committed unto thy trust, avoiding profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science falsely so called. Yeah, like evolution. Yeah. Which some professing have erred concerning a faith. Grace be with thee. Amen. The first to Timothy was written from Laodicea, which is the chiefest city of uh, P H R Y G A G I A P A C A T I A N A Phrygia Pasatiana. I don't know, something like that. Um, all right, well, I've already 
Boy, I've already gone over an hour. Oh, boy. Some people say I talk too much. All right. Um, well, I thought this was going to be the end of the series. I'm wrong. I've been wrong a bunch of times. Um, yeah. So, I guess I'm going to make a part five. That'll be the end. So, all right. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Hey, everybody. I closed out too early. Uh, I got to finish up Revelation chapter 3. I'm sorry. Um, all right. Revelation 3, verse 14. And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot, I would that thou wert cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing, and knowest not that, that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. Oh yeah, they got clothing, but spiritually they're naked. Spiritually they're blind. Spiritually, they're poor. Verse 18. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire. Uh, I don't think he's talking about uh, physical gold. I think it's more of a spiritual gold. But I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire that thou mayest be rich and white raiment, clothing, that thou mayest be clothed and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. And anoint thine eyes with eye salve, 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 that thou mayest see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am sit down with my father in his throne. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. All right. And all blessings, praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name, amen.